Pakistan has a mental barrier whenever it comes to you know playing Australia but I don't think their main focus is to you know increase awareness of the sport in Canada but they want their league to be popular in India so that they can earn it in the subcontinent so that they can earn a little bit of money their main right. focus is to increase the awareness of their league in our country rather than increasing the sport in their country you know at the expense of the ICL the Indian Cricket League the IPL was born and the matches are starting at 7:30 pm india time that means the matches will be played early in the morning so if your intention is to grow the sport in usa the matches should be played according to the preference of the people so i don't think their intention is to grow the sport in uae but to get some attraction from india and i'm not a fan of that i'll put them at f f oh wow them are fighting words yeah how are y'all guys? This is Joey. I'm here with Utsav Chang. This is podcast number two. We're getting into it. Utsav, how are you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. But before we start anything, I got to ask you, did you watch any of the U19 uh, World Cup recently? Have you seen any of those games? I did, actually. I followed quite a bit of uh, the Indian-New Zealand game the india nepal game that just happened right now and uh, you know the india usa game apart from that i have i have actually watched uh, a few games of namibia they have done uh, better than what i was expecting from them especially the game against australia I, I i was just rooting for them like somehow namibia just defeat australia they had them in the clutches but you know things did not turn out the way they wanted it to yeah, unfortunately, I didn't. I didn't watch any of those games as much as I was watching the U nineteen USA team, and mm-hmm. um, we really took it to Afghanistan. Like we were in the the final over, you know, it was the fiftieth over, right. and Afghanistan just got that final six with three balls left. I was I was broken hearted. Um, but one thing I wanted to ask you about that is, have you seen the? The unibrow on Nelman Shah. He was the captain for Afghanistan. How epic, how freaking epic is this unibrow? Have you ever seen a unibrow this amazing in your entire life? Oh my god. When you when you had his picture on your community post, it just I just broke out into laughter. Honestly. Yeah. Like I shouldn't, but I oh. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah, I have a little segment. Who has the best unibrow in all of cricket? I think he has got number one hands down. If they did a U nineteen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Contest, he's a champion. He beats everyone. Yeah, Baba Azam comes in close. He's second place in my opinion for that thing. Yeah, Baba Azam, Baba, like talking about Baba Azam, I would say that like he's a brand of cricket in Pakistan, and oh, like yeah. like he's not he's not given enough uh, you know facial treatment that he should like he should be looking good when he comes on television if you, if you look at virat kohli he looks oh yeah to the the most handsome man who plays the sport and yes. if you look at babar azam he has a unibrow even till date it's just surprising i like so respect about that though like i don't care like what anyone thinks like i'm just going to you know bust this out hairy as all can be um, you know, I respect Barack Kohli, but something about that is just like awesome to me. Um, so I kind of respect that. And if you've seen Barack Kohli when he was young, man, he looks totally different. Like he looks like, yeah, a, yeah, totally you know. and, and then, um, Fawad Alam, I don't know if this guy's popular at all, but this is what guy I found. Fawad he, Alam. Is, he is quite popular. Uh, he played a test match back in 2010, I guess. And then he was, he vanished for a decade and then came back again for a few test matches and then again vanished and in between he was doing some uh, tv serials i guess daily soaps <laughs> and just hilarious oh, yeah. like how oh, can really? you be an so actor together? oh that's awesome so he's like on pakistani tv yeah i think he did one tv uh, you know series or something like that i need to watch that like like as soon as possible that's awesome like cricketers on TV shows. That's that's so cool. Uh, Surya, oh man, Surya Kumar. No way, yeah. man. No ways you're doing this to him. Yes. Yeah. He looks different. <laughs> this is a younger picture of him. But yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, man, this is. What, what this do you is, know about? This is this is his picture when he was not making as much money. He had a twenty lakh uh, IPL contract back in the day. Today he earns a lot more and totally deserved. How much is twenty lakhs? Uh... Um, wait, let me convert it right now. Yeah, I need. Next time, guys, I will definitely understand what a lakh is. Yeah, he'll say to the calculator. Uh, yeah. less than twenty-five thousand USD. Wow! Wow. 25k here is different than 25k in UK and um in UK in India though. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah, money changes you like totally totally changes you. You can see that with Virat Kohli, some of these cricketers once they get money mm -hmm. their appearance changes. That's why I'm hoping I get money one day cuz uh you know super poor right now. You see him see him with Hardik Pandya like he he comes from a very humble background like he was very yeah. rich and then suddenly he had a uh you know economic crisis and then today he is one of the one of the richest indian active players and he's the he has he carries his swag and you know he has one of the best appearances he's he's a very very stylish person i would say he he looks really down to earth like i saw him in an interview he looks like easy to talk to like on the street like if you ran into him on the airplane or whatever like you could have a conversation with him he seems cool i yeah, don't know if that's true but... totally I mean, yeah, he he is a very humble person. <laughs> he is a very humble person, but uh, uh, he stays in controversies uh, three months out of twelve, and he stays in injury nine months in the in the remaining nine months. So when he's not oh, when he's not injured, he is among the controversies. Oh man, this guy is on the injury reserve list constantly. Um, yeah, so just so you guys know, U19 is going to look like India, South Africa, Australia, Pakistan, just to give you a little flavor of this. So I'm going to freak out if Australia wins. But uh, yeah, that's it. Who do you think is going to win this tournament? Um, I mean, obviously, India is going to win. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, like be, uh, being humble, I would say Australia versus Pakistan might just be the greatest. Like it is going to be a very very good match because pakistan has a mental barrier whenever it comes to you know playing australia they hardly right. ever win against right. australia in ic not only in icc they bottle their home bilateral series they hardly ever win away and uh, they had a they had a really good chance of winning a t20 world cup in 2021 which they bottled in the last over when matthew hayden matthew wade hit uh, three sixes of shine shah afridi who is a really classy bowler so australia versus pakistan might just be the most interesting match considering that uh, are the is the, is the young generation you know coping up with the pressure can they beat australia or will they just succumb to the pressure because pakistan under 19 team is a really good team and so is india south africa and australia oh uh, please pakistan please beat australia i can't handle my heart cannot handle another australia win i i will i will have a panic attack There'll be a crisis on, on my channel. Okay. Anyway, that's awesome. You're way more knowledgeable than I am. And, and this is the first topic, T20 leagues around the world. Um, yeah. So tell me about this. Uh, what are your thoughts about all these? I try to find every league I could that was like professional. The Euro mm -hmm. T20 slam obviously doesn't exist yet, but that's one between like Netherlands, Ireland, and Scotland. Um, but what are your thoughts about T20 leagues around the world? Um, I think uh, IPL was a pioneer of this thing. Uh, just because IPL was financially so successful that like it it produced what a million times, you know, the the investment. and it's still going like very very strong and it is i i would still say that it is in its initial stages but right. uh, the the reason why everybody started was like just because in ipl has had such success a little bit little bit of success can be derived to us as well which is not wrong on their part but i think uh, there are some fundamental problems which i will be talking about seriously in this podcast I and i want your opinion on the 20 leagues I think there's a fundamental problem, but it comes from my uh, Yankee-ness, my American-ness. Um, and if you talk to any American and you're going to say, oh, Major League Cricket or uh, let's watch the big, you know, trash league, a bash league, or, uh, <laughs> you know, they're going to be like, why is it only a month long, dude? 
Like this is your yeah. league. Awesome. You know, you're getting paid like $2 million to play in the Indian Premier League for like two months. That's awesome. But, you know, why are the leagues so short? And that be- that revolves around us having a huge domestic calendar, especially in baseball, mm. more compared to baseball. Baseball is like every day, boom, 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 boom. For six months, you take a break for right. all-star in the middle, and that's it. And then you have like international competitions to the left, to the right. But my big issue with these is that they're so short. And you have someone like Faf Duplessis or um, Max uh, Maxwell, the guy. What's his first name? Um, something. Glenn Maxwell. Glenn Maxwell. I was looking up his stats. I hate that guy. But, um, you know, he's played for like 20 different teams. Like, it's ridiculous. And so, like, yeah. players, like, don't stay for the same team every year. It's not always certain. And um, so there's that. And the fact that the season is not very long and you could play for multiple teams in a season. I hate that. Mm-hmm. That's my two big issues with uh, T20 leagues. Otherwise, I love I love Indian Premier League. Um, big Bash League is great. And, and my favorite is probably the 100, too. I know that's not T20, but um, it's close. Vitality yeah. Blast, obviously, the original one. I watched that. Um, Major League Cricket, obviously, is number one. But, you know, what, what are your thoughts on this? Is it different than kind of my kind of American gripe with uh, some of these leagues? Your concern about uh, like one player playing for multiple leagues is not, a, is not a feature of cricket, but it is a limitation, I would say, because there are not as many players, like honestly. You know, the day cricket becomes popular in European countries and even South South American countries, uh, you know, become a a really good cricket playing countries and and we get, you know, very good players out of them. That is the only way we can have players playing exclusively for one team. Otherwise, you know, there is a there is Rashid Khan who plays for Trent Rockets in in uh, the hundred. The uh, Rashid plays for uh, Gujarat Titans in IPL. He plays for Lahore Kalanders in PSL. He plays for, uh, I guess, Sydney Thunders. No, he plays for Adelaide Spikers in the BBL. Okay. BBL. Uh, and then he plays for MI New York as well in the MLC. And right. uh, I think he, he plays in the ILT20 as well. So he plays all around the world. And same goes for every other player. So I think this is a limitation more than a feature. And uh, the only way we can counter that is having more countries playing. And again, it is it is like a paradox. Like if you if you have a T20 league, a little bit of money will be coming. A few people will be interested, and sport will grow gradually in your country. Yeah, I think I think having a domestic league is super important. I didn't think of it that, that way. That's that's a good way to think about it. Um, mm. What do the futures hold for these leagues? I mean, Indian Premier League is still like brand new when you compare it to you know the English. Premier League. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, what does the future hold for Indian Premier League? You know, what does that look like? Because it's gotten bigger. It's gotten longer. Right. Um, like, before I before I enter IPL, I would like to point out that there are some leagues missing. And the, the reason they are missing is because they are shut down. And the problem is that they're, like... Uh, they made some fundamental problems that is going to affect every league. Like there is a global T20 league out there, which is played in Canada. And of course, there is MLC as well. So the main problem is that if, suppose the first game of IPL, there would have been barely any Indian players playing the sport. Like for, uh, like taking MLC into example. Uh, like Texas Super Kings is a, is a really good side. The openers are Favre Duplessis and Devon Conway, uh, a great South African legend and a, and a modern day legend of New Zealand. But will an American be interested in watching a South African and uh, you know a Kiwi play in your in your country trying to promote a sport? For that, I guess I guess the only way these local tournament, the local uh, you know leagues can thrive is by having. Uh, like the people from the same nationality. Right. Uh, for example, I know of just one uh, US cricketer very well. That is Ali Khan. He played, oh. uh, 
yeah he played cpl he played the ipl i i i think he got a few matches in ipl i'm not sure about that but he yeah. definitely played the caribbean premier league so yeah, that, yeah. so mlc should uh, you know make ali khan as the brand like whichever team he's playing for ali khan should be the brand and he should he should be the reason why people come to watch the sport like if if you take in ipl for for example uh, even though there is such huge dominance of the foreign nationals playing the sport but still uh, you know the top four five teams are bangalore chennai mumbai right. the reason being uh, like chennai has ms dhoni who is a greatest great indian player right. virat kohli is a great indian player so is rohit sharma and before sachin used to play in mumbai indians gautam gambhir used to play in kolkata knight riders so these this is the reason why most of the ipl franchises which are doing good are doing so and this is this is the thing that india uh, like the ipl is also working upon is like virat kohli cannot be playing for you forever there is going to be one day when he says that okay this is enough i have had my time i will step down i'll hang my boots then the popularity of ipl will get a hit so for that reason gujarat titans is a very important uh, you know franchise with respect to indian premier league because it has players it had hardik pandya and it has shubman gill and they are the future of indian cricket so once these guys step out the newer guys have to make their names yeah yeah brack kohli can can retire after the olympics he needs to stay on for the olympics and then once once <laughs> yeah, los right. angeles is done he can retire but before then got to stick with it yeah that's one reason uh, i love minor league cricket and that's again that's a baseball model that we use in in cricket here so in baseball there's major leagues and then you you kind of get relegated by players you don't get relegated by teams like in english premier league so if you're you know there's a major league right here then triple a double a single a and that's kind of what they have for minor league cricket that's where we have all the american players playing in a minor league cricket team so they play with a minor league cricket team and then they play for major league cricket and so i have a team local team here for minor league cricket that i'm going to be watching and covering uh, it's going to be great but i think that's the way finding players from minor league cricket and pushing them into major league cricket i don't care about the stars so much i just want to see new upcoming americans play watching the u19 world cup seeing these guys come in um you know uh shubra super maniac and uh you know um kushpalala um um aryan garg Gar- arya garg yeah some great bowling talent i want to see those guys play i don't know what i do with the fact du plessis when he plays in my country for you know four weeks and then goes and gets a paycheck somewhere else we're very jealous people in america So if I see my player Fatu Blessis and he's playing in another team I'm going to be pissed off like no you play for my team dude you play for my right. team but uh you could play for South Africa but other than that you play here So um so that's like that's an issue I think and that's going to be a real issue with Americans they're not going to accept that like so readily uh maybe one other team like yeah a- i mean i i would say that like there is a lot of similarity between the people of us and the people of india when it comes to ad- adopting a sport um i would say that you know the role of foreign players are very important in a league like you cannot be you cannot be a superstar or it cannot you know it cannot gain a lot of word of mouth without overseas players ipl wouldn't have been ipl if brendan mccallum did not score 158 in the very first match like it set the stage for us and matthew hayden had a really good ipl season ipl's initial season but again it should be it should be balanced with you know the indian people indian stars as well when it comes to us or canada there has to be local people doesn't necessarily mean the natives the, it doesn't necessarily mean the white people or the black people but the indian right. immigrant should be involved so that it it opens yeah. the gate for us cricket yeah just get someone that's uniquely american ours even if they're like play for another country um even if you know but they're 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 situated here they play in our domestic leagues they you know they support our uh teams here i think that's so important yeah and you can't get that when you come in for 4 weeks and then ship off 
um and right. you do that yeah um yeah i mean you... i mean like when when uh, like suppose a new us cricket fan like like a us fan tries watching cricket and he sees mm-hmm. ali khan bowl very well like he bowls a spell of you know four overs very 30 likely. runs and he takes three wickets and then he will he will be rooting for him so that he plays for us in the world cup and like he does well there as well the same goes for like this is one thing that i feel sa20 is doing really well south africa yeah south. yeah the sa20 league is doing very well uh, i recent like they are valuing their players as well like i understand the mm-hmm. concept of having four overseas players and all but i am hearing names which you know of, of players who are not close to the south african cricket like the international side but they are doing really well like uh yes. someone like ricardo is doing very well uh devald brevis we have been hearing about him ever since his under 19 uh you know the run he had so this this is what is required and, yes. and you know there are there are some other there are some other problems with south africa 20, t20 is that a lot of the games get washed out this is not what you want you have to start the league when you know the when it's not monsoon basically you need to have all the matches there should not be any restrictions like rain delays and maybe later in the future we might have snow delays as well bad light these are all things that are keeping the sport uh, you know restricted and this is what we need to avoid as much as possible yeah i don't even know how global t20 canada even has a league I, i'm surprised half the games are snowed out canada is a winter uh, wasteland half the year but you know speaking honestly um that's something that's going to be hard to understand is no results you know that just rained out you know typically in, right. in american sports you would make that up um hmm. but your point about like lower you know lower level south african players i love that idea and i think that's so important you know india it seems really unfair you have a country of you know 500 million bajillion people uh you know like 1.4 billion people and right. how many players can play on the you know indian cricket team 11 and then maybe the other teams maybe 50 totals 100 so i think having a domestic system is so important to developing other talent and i love watching other talent rather than and then you want to root for them to get on the national team i mean that's part of it like you're watching mm-hmm. this guy in the domestic league like i really hope he can earn his spot into the domestic league you could see that firsthand you know in another way you couldn't see that um and root for the player i think that's really important i think south africa has made sa20 their priority so much so that they're willing to forego you know a test series with new zealand or say like this is our priority the domestic league and i think that's what like i have an i have an opinion about this that south africa is sending a a, a young side to new zealand like they're sacrificing mm-hmm. the They're not only sacrificing this test series they're also sacrificing their chances in the wtc you know the finals but like if if you look at it from uh, you know just just the fact that they're prioritizing t20 league it will sound very wrong but south africa needs money right now south african cricket needs money right now and it is really important for them to have a domestic tournament right now otherwise in the future they might just have to like let go of test cricket and that right. that is going to be a, a higher uh, loss in the future so in order to restrict that you need to take a low blow right now and focus on something that the people will call you know anti uh, the traditional cricket or anti you know cap- like pro capitalistic or whatever but you need money right now and there is nothing wrong with earning money yeah i was saying in the last podcast the baseball if it wasn't such a capitalist sport in such a capitalist country we would have probably had two different types of baseball and that's one thing i love about cricket but it's also like i want to watch cricket i want to go to games i want to like have my team that's the domestic leagues in t20 i mean that's the future whether you like it or not it's going to happen so just let it happen just let it happen um besides indian premier league uh you know you mentioned sa20 are, are there any other leagues that you watch uh semi regularly or enjoy you know seeing it now and then yeah i would like to have this on the screen right now for the time being oh yeah um i 
I have I have I have religiously followed a couple of seasons of the Caribbean Premier League. I really like Caribbean Premier League, uh, especially like the thing is that CPL brings a flavor into the sport, and when you start liking a team, you cannot go back. You cannot change it. Like there there is a a KKR, uh, you know KKR is the pa- parent franchise, uh, and the the team is Trinidad Knight Riders. uh you know that is the team which keeps on winning every year but i'm i'm not a big fan of that team because obviously i like to root for the underdogs so i am yeah. a fan of st lucia kings st okay. st lucia yeah. king uh, was earlier called st lucia zooks uh, and later it got uh, acquired by punjab kings franchise so it is called st lucia right. kings right now and yeah. i i just love that like roston chase five two places is a part as well alzari joseph is a part as well so i, I have followed that team a lot um apart from that i have followed on and off i have followed psl and uh, the 100 and uh, yeah a cu- a, cu- a couple of seasons of big bash league i just love one thing about big bash league is that they have their uh, you know jerseys sorted the jersey colors are so unique that you do yes. not find it anywhere like jerseys is something which rest of the cricketing world has failed us like they are not putting in any creative head when they are making jerseys yeah you can continue i love the i mean that was the first league i saw besides the indian premier league was the big bash league and uh the sixers uh with uh moises and enriquez that was yeah, my yeah, team yeah. and um uh, just the pink the brightness of it you know not the like, pink but it was so distinctive and they have such a mm. distinctive variety and i think that's what these cricket you know competitions need because otherwise you know it's just the same thing and that's why i really don't like this encroachment of like these teams changing it to you know mi new york mi dubai or <laughs> mi whatever right, you know right. um it's just the same thing it just you know is it the same team like what is this so i like mm. the distinctiveness of it and that's why i i was uh really in favor of the nepalese uh everest league because that was mm. like a home grown league and i think recently they sprung up another league called uh nepal premier league or something i forget what it's called but and they're and they're in infusing it with a uh, cash from india and they're doing the same thing they're making ipl franchises and then converting them over into nepal and so they kind of have these two competing leagues now um and that's confusing for me because like which league do i watch you know it's like it reminds me of uh early days of american sport we had the same issues you know in the 1920s we had that in baseball where there's two leagues in the 1960s you had an american football um so it's like funny the same issues where you have competing competitions in the same country and i think it net needs like 10 20 years to like flesh out the combine you know and and get stronger because of that but you're seeing these issues in cricket because it hasn't been fully professional that other leagues other sports don't have because they've already dealt with those problems um earlier in the past so it's just a consequence right. of of the structure of it but you know it is what it, that's quick life you know basically that's quick life so what are you going to do about that um What um, were your thoughts about this new uh, Abu Dhabi league that one in white there? Um, um is that, that the T10 league or is it the IL T20? Or is that it's that one next to Caribbean Premier League? It's not the T10. I think that's a different uh-huh. podcast. I was I was going to do T10 and there's a couple mm. T10 leagues. But I guess that's a yeah. different um that is called uh the IL T20 I guess. Yeah, the ILT twenty. Yep. Hmm. I mean, there are there are so many leagues happening to an extent that we we have to like start two different leagues at the very same time. So this is not a very good sign, I would say. Um, especially like these leagues do not have a lot of value left anymore. If so much, so many leagues keep on happening all together, then uh, you know, and especially the the leagues have to focus on one thing that what do they actually want. uh do they want people from india or people from the indian subcontinent to come and watch the sport on television so that the bro- broadcasting right. rights go up and they can earn a little money or do they want it to increase the awareness of the sport in the country 
like this is a very important question and i would say that i am i'm have i have made made my opinion about certain uh, tournaments and i might be totally incorrect so just excuse me if i am wrong this is just my opinion and uh, when whenever it comes like whenever i look at a league who is just trying to make money gd20 comes into my mind because uh, gd20 just won all its uh, attention just because attention in india just because yuvraj singh was coming back and yuvraj singh advertised it like okay i'll be playing the global t20 in canada come watch the sport watch it on television watch it on uh, you know your mobile and i i tuned in along with a lot of indians who wanted to see yuvraj singh bat again if you do not know about yuvraj singh he is a world cup hero for us and he yeah. he was battling cancer when he was uh, you know playing the world cup and he won the man of the series in that tournament as well so so he is he is considered to be a warrior cricketer in india so he has a lot of respect and you know if i'll if i get to see yuvraj singh play today i'll be tuning into the match no no matter how garbage the tor- the right uh, how right. garbage the league is but i'm not calling gt20 garbage but uh, uh, their main focus seems to be like gaining the attention of indians and now that uh, yuvraj singh is not playing i think they're trying to gain the attention of pakistani uh, you know audience because they are they are getting a lot of pakistani international players to play for you know play in their league not necessarily wrong but i don't think their main focus is to you know increase awareness of the sport in canada but they want their league to be popular in india so that they can earn in the subcontinent so that they can earn a little bit of money uh, one more reason why i think this is because uh, they called a few youtubers from india and pakistan to come to canada to advertise their league like interview their cricketers so this is a classic like giveaway that they do that the main right. focus is to increase the awareness of their league in our country rather than increasing the sport in their country right right that is a great point i couldn't agree more with you the whole purpose of this i mean you can make money of it but that long term money that you're going to make that loyal fan base you're not going to make that in india you're going to make it in canada and that's what i want to see major league cricket do i mean you could do maybe a little bit of that you know rights in india but the main focus should be on the domestic product on domestic fans getting them into the to the stadiums you know um mm. uh there is a uh, premier league was a Pakistani Super League um yeah some of these leagues that come up you know it's like Pakistani Super League but there was another league that's like way older and then these these other leagues like overtake it like have you seen that with like there's that with Pakistan you kind of have it with Nepal you had the Lanka Premier League coming up like have you seen that where it's like one league here is steady and then like another league tries to take it over you also see that with like the yeah, 100 yeah. too it- like even, even india had it even india had it um before ipl ipl was a thing uh, like just one year before ipl was a thing there was a t20 tournament uh, i'm not sure if that was a t20 tournament but it was a thing like uh, the names were given to like cities like there was a team called amdavad rockets and uh, i don't seem to remember a lot of teams name there was a team called lahore badshahs from pakistan as well and i yeah, guess there no, was a team yeah yep i see that mumbai champs chennai superstars yeah mumbai, mumbai champs right 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 so this this was a thing and then this was uh, you know an individual tournament and bcci was not involved in this so bcci just made a rule that okay now this is our league and uh, you know if you want to play there then you cannot play for india and or ipl yeah that was a that was a smart move as well but yeah they basically yeah. ate all of the players and the broad casting rights and you know at the expense of the ICL the Indian Cricket League the IPL was born and you know i have like no problems with it because IPL is not only um you know the people behind IPL are really smart i would say more smart than ICL so i do not have a problem at all they have they have marketed the sport and the league in the country very very well yeah got to watch out for for you get indian guys you you're, you're too smart you kind of scare me sometimes it's like what are you guys doing um yeah exactly i think that was a great idea 
Um, and uh, I, I could agree more. And then you don't have that like uh, competition between leagues. So that was a very good idea. And I was surprised to see that with the hundred, like how did they let this happen? There's vitality blast already. You're going to make the hundred. Do you think hundred or hundred oh. ball cricket has any, any chance, any chance of uh, becoming more popular than T20 cricket? I mean, because I, sorry, I love the product. I love watching the highlights. Um, I really enjoy it. It's simplified. People like my wife could like probably sit down and enjoy the hundred the easiest or the most easily. Or right. Easy, right. But um, you know, what are your thoughts on that? It's crazy. If that happened in baseball, uh, that would be when crazy. the hundred started, <laughs> when the hundred started, I was very skeptical about it. Like you know. There, there, there have been so many experiments with cricket that start and then fizzle out in the next two years or not even yeah. two years in the next two months but uh, or just one game for that matter. But, uh, you know, the 100, uh, I feel, is the most simplest form of understanding the sport. Like six balls in an over and then 20 overs. Right. Uh, froze up here. Yeah, so he's just saying like that. six 100. Ball- yeah, so six balls in an over, you know, 20 overs. It's like, uh, and, and then 100 just simplifies it into tens, you know, simplifies it into tens. And, right, and the funny right. thing yeah. shows how kind of dumb I am. I thought they were going to switch sides every 10 overs, like in baseball. So I was really excited to watch the 100 because I thought they would do like that switching, you know. I didn't understand it, but, you know, because in cricket, you do like batting one half and then the other half, you know, fielding. And for some reason or another, I thought they would be switching sides, but they didn't do that. But yeah, you were saying it's more simplified and stuff like that. Easier. For no, it. I guess the hundred is, the hundred is very, yeah, yeah. Apart from that, the hundred is very pleasing to watch as well. And same goes for BBL. Like you just love, um, I wanted to say that the hundred is uh, not only very, easy to watch but also very pleasing to the eye to some extent yes and same goes for bbl like there are so many colors popping up like it is there are some things that i associate certain leagues with and bbl is that colors like beautiful jerseys um like colorful stadiums the lighting is made in in a certain way that it it looks out of the world and yeah. when it comes to ipl when it comes to IPL, it is kind of like uh, you know the carnival. Like it is the festival of I, the of the sport for the next two months. And same, like there are there are certain things that I apply to every league. And the hundred kind of feels like the way the runs are written, the way the runs required are written, the way player scores are written. It kind of gives me a video game kind of a vibe. And uh, you know. If T20 cricket is not serious, T, uh, the 100 balls is complete. Like, this, we are doing this just for the commercial angle. And it is still fun to watch. I, I like the 100 a, a lot uh, over Vitality Blast. Because Vitality Blast is just another league. Um, I know. And the, the name of the teams are also not very uh, attractive. No, um, yeah. like the old uh, county cricket model, you know. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. So, so I feel that the hundred, I think it has already taken over Vitality Blast, and I have no uh, problems with it. Like hundred is a superior T uh, Twenty superior league, but uh, yeah, this is my opinion on the hundred. <laughs> I think it awesome. will last. I think the hundred will last. You said what last? I think the hundred will last longer. Like, oh yeah, it will not be allowed. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I think you gotta have that distinctive look, you know. Right. And it just pops, just like BBL, you know, Indian Premier League. Obviously, they're right. the top. They don't they have to worry about that as much. But I think that's something going forward for for leagues like Major League Cricket, you know. So, so now that we got that out of the way, I want to see like how would you would rank these teams? Oh, this is a mess Same. here. How would you rank these? You know, leagues. You got. The S tier, the A tier. Let's start uh, number one. How would you rank the uh, G T G T twenty? Hmm. I do not like okay, the whatever teams are coming at the F category. It is 
like straight up offense like the people will come at me just right out but uh, yeah i i am not a big fan of gt20 just the way they are uh, you know marketing their sport it is not the right way to do it in my opinion in yeah the I'm opinion sure of a nobody <laughs> but uh, yeah no uh, you're way smarter than I me i cannot yeah. Agree. yeah i agree i think i think they should combine with major league cricket it's just how we do all our major sports it's canada and usa combined uh we'll take on little brother it's it's fine vitality blasts Hmm. Vitality Blast. I would give. Uh, I would give them some credit uh, because they have. Um, what do I say? You know, there is a sense of respect when it comes to cricket. Be there's some respect for cricket. Yeah, you just cut it off a little bit. There's some respect for cricket, like the longevity yeah. of this league. Yeah, since 2003 or something. Yeah, the longevity, and you know, whenever England plays any form of cricket, they respect it totally. Like county, I have huge respect for county. I have huge respect for Test cricket being played in England. So I would give Vitality Blast, like Vitality Blast, is might just be the reason that uh, cricket cricket is alive, and uh, you know, cricket is alive because T Twenty was also uh, like founded and um, founded by some uh, people sitting in you know the ECB. So I would I would yeah. keep them at average. They're not the best, but they're not bad either. Yeah, the forerunners, but you know, they've lost their touch. Kind of mm. uh, super smash from New Zealand. At, what's it with Australia, New Zealand with KFC? You guys, they're they're obsessed with KFC. There, that's an American brand. But yeah, anyway, they are the main sponsors. <laughs> everything has KFC, like the rugby leagues, uh, the you know. Cricket leagues, I get KFC, but uh, anyway, yeah, Super Smash uh, from New Zealand. Yeah, I mean, Super Smash is one of uh, Super Smash is one of those leagues that you do not, you know, talk about at all. Like I know there is a team called Otago Vaults, and I know there are certain more teams, and I have barely watched anything. Like the, recently, a clip was getting uh, viral. Uh, a super athletic catch was being taken. Like a, a, a guy ran from the 30 yard circle to the boundary and took the catch and, you know, threw it back and someone else took the catch. So uh, awesome. you get a few clips like that. Like Kyle Jamieson took five wickets and, you know, those things came up when Kyle Jamieson got picked up by RCB in, uh, you know, the IPL auction. So uh, Super Smash has done absolutely no work when it comes to marketing. Um, it is a very good league. Uh, you know, you keep hearing about what Finn Allen is doing and their, you know, Scott Kugel line, like you know, the local Kiwi players. But I don't think any like international players play in that tournament. I would give them a even lower rating, slightly below average, probably. I'm not okay, a fan yeah. of Super Smash, to be honest. Yeah, I don't know anything about it, but maybe they're that's good for. Uh what New Zealand needs, you know, being a local league like that. Uh, the Lanka right. Premier League. This is another one that just started. Um, Lanka Premier yeah, I have an I have an opinion about Lanka Premier League is that, uh, you know, I, I don't think Lanka Premier League is the very first league that started in Sri Lanka. There were other leagues as well that couldn't, uh, you know, become, you know, couldn't continue because of... Uh, the the financial profitability right um lankan premier league i think is doing well because you know the matches are being broadcasted here as well and people are interested in right. watching those games as well and they they are getting big names like babar azam is playing in this in this league and big players from uh, pakistan and uh, a few places around the world are also playing in the league uh, but there are issues with uh, you know I, I don't think the the tournament is fully transparent. I think there are some, I would say that there are some factors outside cricket also involved in this league because certain games do not make a lot of sense. The pitches in certain games do not make a lot of sense. And that is what is cutting some points out of this, this league. Otherwise, you know, otherwise this is a really good concept of having, uh, you know, the teams are very, really good. The, the jerseys are okay. Like the colors, the primary colors used are also fine. Yeah. I am yeah. not very happy team, uh, with the transparency. 
yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't be, what can't. the heck is that yeah so anyway, and yeah, you know sorry, it yeah. is one of it is one of those uh, one of those leagues in which you know one player just steals the show like vanindu hasaranga was the most run scorer in this tournament and the most wicket taker in this tournament and obviously was the player of the series and then he got injured while playing the playing in the league and then missed international cricket for the next 6 months i think he's not back even till date um so uh, i just don't want to give a lower rating to this league i'll still give them a c i'll give them average i think yeah. if they do well in the coming years i would easily promote them even if they do slightly better than the last time i will easily promote them to b i think it's i think it c is a good start for sure um and then yeah. you know go from there you know uh caribbean premier league that's a nice logo i have huge respect for this i have huge respect for caribbean premier league i know the country is not doing very well uh, recently they are doing well again but the last two years have been very topsy turvy for west indies I want West Indies to be back in their regular yeah. uh, best that they were, and uh, yeah, I mean, I easily, easily an A to Caribbean Premier League. I love, I love CPL, absolutely love CPL. Me too. I think they got a lot of. Uh, I just love the power hitting from the West Indian players. I just love. Right. the distinctiveness of the players you know Kyron Pollard was my first uh favorite cricketer from Mumbai Indians and uh right. you know and and Chris Gale uh big power hitters I love it yeah um apart okay, from that a- uh, apart apart from that uh, CPL I would say that even they need to work on their pitches a lot like uh, in the in the like when whenever the tournament starts they they get really good pitches pitches nice pitches uh a moderate 180 170 kind of pitch and by the time the tournament ends you can score like even 110 is a winning score so that is a big problem with cpl they need to learn to make good pitches and you know make them last longer yeah so i think you should put them at b i don't i don't mind putting them at b uh, room for improvement for sure yeah That's a room hard for improvement. list wow you're a tough uh, <laughs> tough judge uh um, sa20 Hmm. SA20 doesn't have a lot of sample size I would say because uh, mm-hmm. of obviously M Zanzi Super League was played back in the day and then before that there was some other league as well and I I am not sure if you are aware but Zanzi Super League would have ended a couple of years couple of seasons before because it was doing so bad like financially and AB De Villiers and Favdu Plessis had to put in money from their side so that really? the league could continue for a few more years yeah um so if and even for sa20 i think abd villiers is financially involved with this league because he is the brand ambassador and he is going like he is making reels with indian influencers trying to promote the league in this country i think that uh, even though sa20 is kind of solving the purpose by giving south african players a chance to come up but even they are trying to you know grow in the shadows of ipl because you know the teams like durban super giants and they have a mi team they have a delhi capitals team and yeah they have yeah. a they have a johannesburg super kings as well so uh, yeah i w- i will also give them a b i think in the couple of seasons i think they will be better and you know grow up like yeah. grow up as in <laughs> become i think so too uh, more think, financially see- stable Yeah, I think you see all of these leagues right here. Potential growth is is huge. Um, not so much for for GT twenty. Um, yeah, uh, BPL. We didn't really talk about this. The Bangladesh Premier League. That does not look. Yeah, promising. Bangladesh Premier League. Yeah, Bangladesh Premier League has been around for a very long time, and it is the center stage. Like whenever we talk about, you know, there might be suspicions of. spot fixing or match fixing the the main tournament that comes into mind is bpl even though even though some amazing players have played this like played uh, in this league like i think abd villiers has played chris gale has played a lot of seasons andre russell has played a lot of seasons in the bpl uh, but i think again it is not very pleasing to watch like it is it does not like when it comes to bbl so so much colors right. i think bpl is 
a dull league i would say like when it comes to you know watching it on television but i really like like i think cricket in bangladesh has a lot of potential as a, a lot of potential and uh, i would i would give them an average c rating i think yeah there is too much politics involved when it comes to anything in bangladesh and they need to get better they need to get more stable yeah i agree i i do like the fact that it's like home grown you know and uh you know if you think about leagues you know other leagues it take 20 30 40 years to really get you know strong so uh, i think they're on the right track at least um premier uh pakistani super league psl um i am i actually like if you if you see it from the indian perspective you'll be like you should not promote psl but right. i think psl has done a really good job over the years um i know it is not very easy to grow uh, you know to start a league in a country like pakistan because obviously there is so much so many things involved and uh, yeah i mean the country is also not doing very well economically but psl is profitable and i think it is it has grown over the years it has made a good profit over the years so it is one of those few leagues that are making profit and i am totally in for profit like whenever you start a business or any venture the the most important thing has to be money making and psl is doing that the number of teams are limited the competition is not that much uh, but i i i have a lot of respect for psl because psl has developed itself as a fast bowling tournament and i absolutely love it ps like pakistan yeah. is known for known for being the factory of fast bowlers they have produced so many amazing fast bowlers be it vakar yunus shoaib akhtar wasim akram like they are legendary fast bowlers absolutely legendary so they have uh, you know presented themselves as a fast bowling tournament like shoaib tanveer uh, and the the local players as well <clears throat> haris rauf hasnan naseem shaheen yeah so I, i really like really like psl i don't follow it a lot i don't watch a lot of matches but i still have a lot of respect for psl i'll give it a strong a it is okay. better than cpl wow okay that's awesome yeah i love fast uh, bowling when i played baseball i was a fast pitcher so i i like that um okay you have one of the best uh tier 2 or associate nation leagues especially homegrown leagues here in the everest premier league um do you know anything about this and how would you rate this i actually uh, do i actually do know a little about this like not a lot i know a little and especially it is it is so fascinating because nepal cricket is not discussed as much in india because for obvious reasons we are uh, too narcissistic and too self obsessed with ourselves to think of any other league any other any other team and especially coming from uh you know nepal being not so uh, you know not so grown up cricket nation and when this everest premier league thing came up uh you know it it did create a lot of buzz i i do not know how many teams play what are the players involved but i do know that everest premier league involves especially because of the the name they have taken they have not yeah. put in their country's name rather they have put in the 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 thing their country is known um, for uh, mount, yeah. mount everest i I have a lot of respect for Nepal cricket and Nepal T20 league. I want them yeah. to grow because I think in the long run Nepal is going to become a cricket superpower. Uh so yeah there is a lot of room for improvement but for being an associate nation they are doing pretty well. I don't know how much financially stable they are. Yeah. And I but I want the best for them. I I would put them above average. B B is B is a good good place for them. It's solid especially for for an associate member. Um that's yeah. a huge accomplishment yeah i agree uh might as well do this one and i don't know if you know anything about it, the nepal t20 no, no. um and i that, think that... whichever whichever came first i think everest premier league was the first tournament nepal yeah. t20 was uh, later introduced i'm not a big fan of having multiple tournaments in your own country um yeah so i kind of like if nepal t20 is profitable i want them to grow but if they are struggling like most other like gt20 or something like that i do not want them to continue for a long time i'd put them at below average e would be a good place for them i would say 
Yeah, okay. Because uh, fundamentally it is not right. You need to reduce competition and if you are just getting competition within your thing that does not make a lot of sense. Yeah, buy teams in the Everest Premier League, you know, put put that cash in the league that already exists, you know. Right. Um, yeah. Ooh, we're running out of leagues here and, you know, I want your honest opinion. Not just cuz I'm here, but the uh, Major League Cricket. I'll be honest don't worry. <laughs> if yeah. I if I'm not a big fan of US cricket I'll be I'll be blunt on your face. I'll be brutal. Lay it on me, lay it on me. But, okay. Yeah, but uh, I mean I am very much interested in US cricket, not just US cricket. I want a superpower country to enter the world of cricket as soon as possible and MLC is a good step. One thing that I like about MLC is that the matches start according to the preference of people in us which is not the case with certain other leagues when you look at even the world cup the the world cup that is you know lined up right now the 2024 20 world cup the matches are starting at 7:30 pm india time that means the matches will be played early in the morning so if your intention is to grow the sport in usa the matches should be played according to the preference of the people like if people are watching the match at 6 pm like local time that makes right. more sense but i think icc is trying to get as much uh as much viewership from india and pakistan and they're not uh, you know very much thinking about growing the sport in usa so uh, one thing that mlc has done well is that matches start at midnight india time not midnight i think very early morning india time so that right, is right. a good thing uh, right, right. i appreciate that 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 mlc is not trying to vouch for attention from indians which is really really important and uh, if i am not wrong there is a decent us popul- like us players playing in this league you have yeah, to tell yeah. me on this oh yeah there's there's about a half i mean they're not like a, on the roster um it, and you're getting those mm-hmm. minor league teams coming into major league cricket so um or the minor league players so i'd say at least 40% uh, on every team although they might not be on the ma- you know the starting lineup yeah yeah right yeah so i think mlc is on the right track um and especially another another right thing is that the owners are you know very like of indian uh, you know origin i don't know all of them but most of them are and they have to target the the indian population or the uh, you know asian population living in us so that the country grow, uh, so that the sport grows in the country and uh, you know seattle orcas was is uh, owned by uh, satyan adela who wanted to be the who wanted to be a spin bowler for hyderabad but later he need, he had to compromise and then he became the ceo of uh, microsoft okay anyways i think spinner for hyderabad would have been a better uh, yeah. provision but anyways uh, yeah he he did quite a thing for himself yeah mlc i would have to keep it along with everest premier league i think mlc would be more financially uh, stable than epl uh, the everest premier league but for the time being mlc just has one season So let's see how it goes. I'll keep them good, but not great. Okay, so an A. Okay, I'm sure. Uh, okay, uh, good, but not great. A B. Okay, yeah, no, that's very this is, generous. This is totally because this is this is totally because this is the first time. Like just one season has happened. Give it some time, two seasons, three seasons. I'm I'm absolutely sure that the future of cricket needs to go from India to other countries as well. I yes. just cannot imagine cricket being played between you know the current ten, twelve countries in the long run. Anyhow, yeah. South America needs to enter. Anyhow, the European countries need to enter. Oh, I... And I think the gateway has to be North America. Yeah, yeah. I th- I think there's huge potential there. My biggest gripe about Major League Cricket is that they only play in two cities. They need to play in Washington mm-hmm. D.C. Uh, it makes no sense to have a team based in Washington D.C. and they don't even live in Washington D.C. They don't play in Washington D.C. Yeah. So that's my biggest gripe. Okay, uh, the uh, hundred, the hundred. 
um i think this might be very controversial but, uh, because uh, you know i have rated cpl and sa20 at b but i like the 100 a lot because i think it is very important for a new cricket watcher to start from the 100 because it is yeah. so pleasing to the eye yeah. it it is very like video game ish uh, kind of it yeah. gives a video game kind of a vibe and of course the 100 balls it is it is easy mathematics like uh, you know the the opposition has scored 200 199 runs you have to score 200 that means on an average two two runs per ball there are right. 100 balls in world i really like this concept and uh, i am all in for experimentation like anything like we have come to like we have evolved with time just because of trial and error you try things right. that do not work and then you do something that works and then you stick to it so i think the 100 is a very good step and the teams that they made was excellent the colors of the jerseys excellent awesome. yeah i i am a, like there are very few things that uh, the 100 does not tick as a franchise so i really like them i think over the years it will it might just become s class but currently i would say the second best choice yeah uh, yeah i agree oh 100s awesome uh Great memories watching the the highlights too. Um, Internet, what is this? International League. Yeah, International T20. League T20. Um, I think it is necessary for cricket to develop in UAE, but I'm not yeah. sure how many how many players from UAE are actually playing this, and how many how many uh, people you know living in UAE are actually interested in IL T20. I think this yeah, is I'm just it, um, this is just. Do, do, Dubai Capital. Sorry to cut you off. Dubai Capital has one, two, three, four, four people from uh, UAE. Not very many. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Really. I think this is just uh, the IPL franchise trying to rub their money off somewhere. Um, yeah. I am not so a like, big yeah. fan of IL T20. Honestly speaking, I have not watched a single ball. I know this is another one of those leagues that invites influencers from India to come and watch the game and you know put up a story and a post just you know marketing in India. So I don't think their intention is to grow the sport in UAE but to get some attraction from India and I'm not a fan of that. I'll put them at F. F. Oh wow, them are fighting words. Yeah. I I think it's a cash grab and I think Right, it, they have so much money in Dubai and, and United Arab Emirates. It's it's easy, you know. They they could have got this league, you know, in a month, you know, set it up, and it's just not homegrown. So I can appreciate an Emirates Premier League, which right. seems, you know, like homegrown, or even even the Pakistan Premier uh, Super League. You know, that's kind of newish. It still has a homegrown feel to it. Uh, I guess we'll do this one. This one, you know, I don't know PSL, if this even counts. Uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I would like to add something about PSL is that PSL gives a lot of credit to their youngsters. Like, it is like the IPL where domestic players are given weightage as well. Even in PSL, the domestic players are given a lot of weightage. Even like I have followed PSL a little bit, and I know of a lot of uh, domestic players who are performing really well for Pakistan. Some of them have uh, debuted recently, like Saim Ayub, uh, Azam Khan have de- has debuted. um then shahid jada farhan has debuted so these are pakistani domestic players uh, khurram shahzad so i know them because of psl and a little bit of buzz around but i think psl has done a really good job that way which most leagues have been have failed to do and of course the the associate leagues have a lot of res- i have a lot of respect for the associate leagues if they are uh, managing to stay afloat by being profitable heck yes yeah yeah Oh yeah, I'm I'm appreciating uh, Pakistani league way more. Um, Euro Euro T20 Slam. This is a proposed league with Scotland, Ireland, and the Netherlands. Uh, six country, six team league with two teams from each country. Never got up running because of COVID. Um, so I don't even know if we we rate this, but uh, hopefully this gets up and running because I they those league those countries don't even really have a, a good. G20 league which is kind of you know a little embarrassing but uh what would you think of the potential of this league could be you know or if do we even rate it 
I think the Dutch Dutch T20 Cup used to exist back in the day. I'm not sure if yeah. it exists now. I think there was an Ir- Irish uh, T20 league as well. I'm not sure how how you know relevant that is. I'm it's not like sure about Scotland trophy. Scottish cricket yeah. at all. Yeah, they're so small. Yeah. You know, it's it's the province based yeah or like county based and it's so small. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that there is absolutely no shortage of talent when it comes to cricket in these three countries. You know, I I really wanted someone like Baz De Lead or uh, Logan Van Beek to yes. you know some IPL franchise to just just sign them up, but you know it did not happen. But you know, apart from my favorite teams overseas players, the only overseas player I root for is Sikandar Raza because he comes from Zimbabwe. Oh yeah. And I know that cricket needs to develop there. I I want Blessing Muzarabani to play in IPL. He Blessing Muzarabani by the way plays in PSL if I'm not wrong. uh so yeah the psl does uh you know um uh, gives a a chance to players from zimbabwe as well so another positive for them um and yeah euro t20 slam let's not rate it before it starts but i think it has a lot of potential even players from uh you know ireland i'm a big fan of paul sterling i'm a big fan of mark adair josh little plays in ipl uh then George Dockrell has been around for a while. Kevin O'Brien has been around for a while. I I really like I really respect these players. I'm not very uh, knowledgeable of the Scottish cricket, but sure, Ireland and Netherlands have all my respect. And even Scotland is doing really well when it, you know, I followed the the World Cup qualifiers, the ODI World Cup qualifiers, and they did really well. They just fell short. I, they didn't actually fell short. The game was decided by some uh, abnormal cricket from Baz De Lee. So yeah, yeah they're yeah. unlucky out. I love Netherlands so much and you know, new world cricket is not just about like the new world in North America but also new countries like like Netherlands and I was rooting for them so much in the in the Cricket World Cup. I grown to love them. Right. So I want to see them play T20 in their home countries. So I was really disappointed. And Ireland's kind of my team in in um uh, the tier 1 nation. So um even though they're mm-hmm. terrible, they disappoint a lot. Uh Big Bash League, KFC. Yeah. Okay, so I, I am asking, uh, like, I have a question. Like, if I put BBL at S, I cannot put IPL, right? Like, there oh, can be just one team in this class league. No, no, you. This is your. You can do whatever you want, boss. Yeah, you, you're the. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, Obviously, the Premier League is gonna get an S tier, you know. But like, it is Big Bash League. come close or on the same level it's close it's it's no it's not lower than an a it could not be you know yeah yeah it could not be lower than an a and uh, bbl again i have a lot of respect because uh, it started independent of the indian players like indian players do not play in any of the leagues but bbl has created a name for themselves their broadcasting rights go at a really high value i'm pretty sure that they are profitable and they are experimenting with the power surge as well a uh, power surge is basically you get four overs in the power play and then two overs the batting team can decide for themselves that only two players can be outside the inner circle so in, if in the death overs you take the power surge you you get an added advantage so i i really like experimentation when it comes to uh when it comes to cricket and you know there are there are some problems that that happened like they they tried closed stadium as well like the stadium yeah. would have a roof so that if it's raining the match would not get affected so it is really really nice innovation but there was some problem that the ball used to kept hitting the roof because the roof was not high enough yeah yeah so obviously uh, experiment comes with problems and i really like when uh, such big leagues with so much yeah. money involved try to experiment so that takes a lot of guts i'll put them at s bbl yeah. i i really like You, you know Australia is so innovative in sports um you know even in rugby rugby league like messing with the rules like trying to come up they they you know them in New Zealand had cricket ma- max and cricket eights you know yeah yeah just yeah, trying yeah. to max. to work things to make it a fresher product and i really appreciate that even with the stadiums you know 
even if it didn't work, yeah. somebody tried it. So we have a trial and error. We have evidence of like, it doesn't work. And I, and I so appreciate right. that about Australia. Uh, I just think that they are a gem. I can't believe I'm saying this, you know, because they, they ruined the cricket world cup for me. Uh, Glenn Maxwell uh, just threw that game against Afghanistan, but, but Australia is such a gem for the cricket community because they do stuff like this. Um, right. you know, they also do stuff like, you know, ruin Afghanistan's uh, historic win against them. Yeah. But anyway, and let's be honest, the Australian players are the best players of cricket. Like, okay, I know we just bottled a World Cup final and we keep losing tournaments to Australia. But yeah, we have to, you know, we have to admit that you know, Australians play the sport the best. They handle pressure like no other. Yeah, I love to hate them so much. Uh, yeah, they're like, you know, and that's the thing in American culture, you know, like the New York Yankees, they go to the playoffs every year. I just hate them. Um, but it's a love to hate relationship, you know, and um, it's right. not because they're bad. It's because they're they're amazing. Um, yeah, I don't even think, I mean, this is, this league is awesome. This is the league that got me. I probably have more, maybe some to say more than, than you. Um, this is the league that got me into T20 cricket and that showed me like it could be, you know, big ass lights and fireworks and cheerleaders and like, holy crap, right. they're, they're, they're not in all white and they're not, you know, playing for, you know, a hundred hours in a day. And, oh my God, such great memories, and, you know, when I first, you know, yeah. Not just because I am an Indian, like, uh, like this is not biased just because I'm an Indian, but IPL has fundamentally done a lot of right things like, you know, pick, like giving city names. That is the first right. Second right, giving priority to Indian players over overseas players. Second right. Third, giving chance to overseas players as well, like not sidelining them. Uh, but, you know, uh, another right thing that they did was four overseas players, no more than that, so that the Indian players get the chance and there there is space for, uh, there is space for the, you know, uh, the overseas players as well. Along with that, financially, they have done really well. Uh, they are a decacon now, $10 billion valuation. Uh, along with that, individual le individual teams have uh you know billion dollar valuation like csk no. has over 1 billion dollars mumbai indians are over 1 billion dollars i think even rcb is somewhere close even kkr is somewhere close and uh, even gujarat titans the new team the lucknow team they are super highly valued and you know this the the new teams that came up gujarat and lucknow their auction was so interesting that i think uh, the two teams together gave India 2,800 crores, which is, let me just, I cannot even convert them. My calculator will just freeze up. Uh, okay. So, so it, the teams are very highly valued and it is not the end. Like we have not hit stagnation at all. I think there is a very, right. very long way to go with the 11th team coming in the 2027 IPL, probably another uh, team from Southern part of the country which is totally fine. Yeah, I think IPL is the pioneer. And yeah, I think we cannot ever speak enough. The buzz, right. the everything, the crowd, everything, just the top of the tier is um, Indian Premier League. You, I just, I want your opinion about this league. Yeah, um, it's important culturally too, because, because of the Indian Premier League and because of Indian influence, I want to learn more about India. I want to learn Hindi. I know that you guys have like 5,000 languages, but Hindi is the obvious choice. Um, so I'm going to buy stuff from India now. So I'm buying, you know, Lucknow is my team. Um, not just giants, but super giants. Um, it's one yeah. step above giants. And um, you know, there, there is, a, there is a, 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 like, you know, why they're called Lucknow super giants? Because the owners, the, the, Group is called RPSG. Uh, okay. Goenka, Goenka group. So uh, that SG they are trying to put in in their uh, whatever whatever teams they buy. So there was a team, uh, the you know CSK and uh, Rajasthan Royals. These two teams got banned for two years, and two new teams came. Uh, one of them was bought by this guy, uh, this RPSG group, and the team's name was Rising Pune Super Giants, which abbreviates oh. to RPSG. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah. it's just trying and to fit in the, the acronym. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the same thing they're doing with uh, ISL as well, the Indian Super League, the the football league, uh, where they bought Mohan Bagan's uh, ownership and they made it Mohan Bagan SG, Mohan Bagan Super Giants. Yeah, so oh, wow. they they do these kind of shenanigans. Uh, Lucknow Super Super Giants, I think they have a lot of potential, but I'm um, I just don't like the creativity. Like the logo is not very good, to be honest. The jersey is not very good, but the team is doing very well. There's no doubt yeah. about that. There's always room for growth, and and I'm new. I got to pick a new team, and uh, and they speak Hindi. You know, it's Uttar Pradesh, and uh, so yeah, yeah I got got to do one of them. Um, yeah, but um, you know, what was I saying uh, about India? Yeah, so I'm buying stuff from India now, and I want to go to India. I'm going to travel to India, and so it's just like you know, anime comics with Japan. You know, it's like a cultural influence, or just like American influence, right. like. Basically everything, you know, from like McDonald's here and, you know, our cartoons, Mickey Mouse, uh, you're buying stuff from America and America is indirectly influencing you and your culture. And I think this is the start right. of when we go back, hundred when we go forward, a hundred years in the future, we'll be like, what was the start of India's world dominance? You'd be like cricket, you know, Indian yeah. Premier League. And then things took off. I really, really look up to India. Um, I'm not just saying this because you're Indian, but just the family structure, the way you guys study math and you put an emphasis on education, um, seeing students from India and seeing students from my country, it's something that we need to emulate. We need to right. see what India is doing and emulate them while keeping the things in our culture that work really well. But I think cricket is a great uh, tool for this for young people. And part of that starts with the Indian Premier League and their influence. And so, you know, if I was going to show somebody uh, a game of T20, it would be the Indian Premier League, hands down. There's no other league that I think you should watch first. I mean, the 100 maybe, um, but, you know, for me, it would be Indian Premier League. And I've not seen anything cricket related from anybody ever except for the Indian Premier League. My daughter's uh, assistant right. principal was wearing um, a Delhi Capitals hat. And he's obviously of Indian origin, but still I saw that and I was honking the horn like, yeah, you know. Wow. It's not even my team, but I was like, I was freaking out. I was like shaking like, oh my God. And, you know, we almost caused like a traffic jam because he was telling me about the team and he was like so excited. Yeah, too. yeah. Now now you guys must be the best of friends. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, unfortunately, like, he left like a couple days later. He was only like a temporary principal. I was like, oh, he left. Like, oh, man. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I'm sure that's going to happen again. Um, when we see hmm. people like that, Americans sometimes do that. I've seen Americans get into random sports like rugby, and you'll see that jersey. You're like, oh, my God, you like that. And if there's one league, where that happens, it's going to be Indian Premier League, um, you know, if we reference it in culture. So that's Indian culture influencing us now. And I think that's great. And so um, obviously my first memories during the pandemic with uh, Mumbai Indians, that was my first team, was awesome. It was mm. awesome. It blew my mind um, just how fast paced and exciting that competition could be. And um, I think that is the way for the future of cricket. So they're doing a lot of things right. And, you know, for an American, it's kind of confusing why you only had like eight teams. Like India is ginormous. Like you should have like 500 teams. Um, you know, typically in American leagues, you have 30 teams. You have 30 teams right. for basketball, 32 for hockey and American football, and 30 for base and uh, baseball. So I think there's like so much growth. And if I could share this real quick, um, I got it right here. Um, you know, if you if you look at teams by revenue, you know, you have the National can Football you share? League. Like, can you present? I Oh, yeah. If you yeah. look at that, you know, the National Football League, you know, is making per match, you know, 63 thousand whatever that money is um obviously i know it's euros i'm being an ignorant yankee but um you know national football league makes tons of money then you have the english premier league and then the indian premier league they only play 74 games 
That's that's right. That's, why? Why wouldn't you play like a hundred billion games? Like, if you look at uh, Major League Baseball, we play way more games. Um, and then that's something that Americans focus on. I know we're kind of getting another thing, but there's so much freaking potential. Like there's only 10 teams and 74 games. You can expand that by like 20. And I'm thinking like an American. We I'm sorry. Can, so like, yeah. Yeah. We expand, can like, increase the game, but we are, uh, you know, restricted because of the window we get. Like we wanted each team to play 16 games, uh, sorry, 18 games, just because there are 10 teams in world, but we still play 14 games each. That is because right. ICC gives us a two month window. We have to finish it within two months. You know, we have to put in two games in weekends in order to make that happen, not exceed. Uh, but, you know, that is good in, uh, like, there is some authority left with ICC. Because if ICC gives a clean ch- clean chit to BCCI that you can have, uh, you know, your IPL window for as long as possible, then it would never end. We will have 10 teams pop up instantly. The quality of IPL will go down because the teams will also get diluted. And uh, obviously, IPL will go on throughout the year and it will never stop. Like, we might just get a one-month window for World Cups. So, I think uh, there should be uh, certain restrictions. And just because there are 74 matches, we are ranked higher than the English Premier League in terms of revenue per match. So, I think that is also very important. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking I'm going into full Yankee mode here. And, you know, don't take my word as like, you know, 100% truth. I'm still developing my opinion, but in, in full Yankee mode, I'd be like, you know what? ICC go F yourself. You know, we're going to make this league as long as we want. You could follow us if you want, but this is what we're doing. We're going to make this a five month competition. We're going to make like 40 teams. Um, I, you know, and I know that that probably wouldn't work for you guys, but you can expand this so much. I mean, slowly build teams, but like, if you look at like American leagues, over time, we expand them like pretty fast, really, really fast. If you look at like um, Major League Rugby or yeah, Major MLR, we're adding two teams every year. Boom, 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 boom. If you look mm-hmm. at Major League Soccer, there's 30, te- there's like 28 teams in that league now because it's right. expansion, expansion, expansion. We're going to make money off this, guys. Come on, um, let's make some money. And so I can't believe like you wouldn't just be like, you know what, ICC, do whatever you want. We're going to focus on this league. We'll play the World Cup for a month, you know, and that's it. And I know people are going to kill me for that. But, like, we'll play World Cup for a month and then the rest of it's our time, you know. Yeah, I mean, um, this is the footballization of uh, cricket again. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're going it is that. eventual. That's, that's yeah, it is segue. eventual, but, yeah, actually, it is a perfect segue. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, I'm going to get better at this, guys. The foot... Football association of cricket, or you know, I change it to soccerization with the Z there, Ugh. right? But I put footballization because there's no that's the best term for it, and that's what people understand the footballization of cricket. Right. So you're basically following the English Premier League or the Premier League. I hate when Americans call it the Premier League, it's like don't know how to say that word, but um. They're following the English Premier League. I love, I love, I love, I love the English Premier League, how they do things with the the relegation and promotion. Um, They have 20 teams in that league, which is perfect size, because then you have a lower league, which also makes money. Yeah. Um, And if if you look at English, I think it's called like championship, which is like a dumb name for it. Um, Because it's like, that's the second league. Why would you call that the championship? That's that's dumb. But um, (laughs) It's an English football league championship. Yeah. But it's the second league. Yeah. Um, but anyway, regardless of the, the bad name, in my opinion, it makes a ton of money. It's ranked 18th on the list that I just shared with you. So it's obviously pulling in a ton. And so, and that's got 20 teams too. And then you go down to EFL league one, EFL league two. And so I love that you can go from all the way at the bottom, all the way to the top. Right. People have their home team. And they could root for their team and there's like there's promotion up and you can kind of follow your team all the way to the tippy top. I would love to see that for, you know, Indian Premier League, but in cricket in yeah, general. Yeah, but that will come at a cost. That will come at a cost. If IPL is 12 months long, all the leagues we were talking about earlier, 
all of them have to go away because the number of players are very limited very few people will be left who are not playing maybe some like all the pakistani cricketers and some people who are not picked and if there are 20 teams or you know 40 teams then there will be very few few players who are not picked so it how comes at a cost like cricket in india like how many people play cricket in india there's like a, an insane amount of people who play cricket in india you can't find more players like like come on let's you're playing I mean, pro now get that guy over here you're pro now <laughs> yeah but you we, we will need more overseas players too right uh, like every team i guess has eight overseas players uh, maximum yeah. like in in the squad so currently we are having 80 overseas players and if we have 40 teams then we will need 320 overseas players where are we going to get these 320 overseas players from i love your thinking this is great we we should send this proposal to the bcii or whatever it's called the bcci <laughs> right yeah that's not very many 320 players i mean like the amount of cricketers i think i think that's a that's a goal to reach and you could do that slowly over time but i don't right. see how that's not possible um I mean India is such a huge country and how many cricketers are there in India like people who play cricket who probably want to play professionally you know and get an opportunity um you know in in difficult economic times to make a living off cricket I would love to see that I would love to see more economic prosperity through yeah, sport, I would like to you know? add one more thing uh, you know one yeah. ignorant american thing that you have done Uh, uh it is that you have not included the women's leagues uh yeah. in the last one so i would like to just add it here that <laughs> that uh, wpl i am i am a big big fan of wpl like honestly it is going to be path breaking for women's cricket and unlike like this is what i have noticed unlike f- the football fans cricket fans are really interested in watching women's cricket because uh, you know they, there are superstar players who play women's cricket julan goswami who has retired is one of the most respected athletes in the country and you know currently it's Herman, harmanpreet kaur and smriti mandana so i think wpl is doing a really good job they know like bcci knows how to build a league and they they have added such good uh, new things into it it is that uh, you know you can have four overseas players that's fine but you can add one more player like uh, four players in the playing 11 and you can have a fifth player from the associate teams and that would not count as an overseas player so that oh, wow. will also encourage players uh, encourage female players from thailand who is thailand which is doing very well in the yeah. international circuit thailand women and uh, you know us women tara norris was one of the players who outperformed in the in the first season of wpl she is from us and this time i think she, she did not get picked but i guess someone will get injured eventually and she will be brought in as a replacement so uh, i was really looking forward to her you know auction but she did not get picked so i was a little disappointed uh, yeah so i think the, the like ipl does certain things that uh, you know just breaks the path away just revolutionizes cricket i think the men's cricket is revolutionized women's cricket is yet to be done yet to go that route and wpl is the way wpl is the way i'm pretty sure that it will surpass psl's watching and cpl's watching very very soon even after really? being a women's you know sports tournament yeah that that's something that crossed my mind i was making the list but i was like you know <clears throat> women's you know cricket is a separate story it is super important but i don't like when we like mix them cuz i get confused like cuz they're two separate sports in my opinion you know yeah that is really important i got two daughters i'm trying to get them into cricket too um and you know soccer it's just soccer everywhere i hate it but um you know i think there's definitely a league for women's league in the future for united states and canada and i think it's really important and and the stories that come uniquely from women's cricket in Brazil and Thailand it gives you other right. opportunities that you don't get from the men's sport so i love brazil just the you know uh what's it called i can never poso de cauchas you know near um near um sao paulo brazil and you know thailand okay. where thailand men are are nothing you know not very well known but the women are so it, it brings you can highlight other countries in ways that you can't um so i think that's important mm-hmm. so i didn't mean to leave out i got two daughters so like don't hang me guys but um you know <laughs> I, 
I think that's that's totally, totally important thing. Um, what else about the footballization of cricket do you not like or think would be a big problem going forward? Yeah, I think uh, there is another major problem. It is that when it comes to IPL, every team gets equal opportunity. Every team has the same purse, like the same amount of money to spend. But that is not the case with uh, a league like EPL. Like Manchester United have, like will have more like money like than the ladies' purse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all have the yeah, yeah. Purse. they, they like have a, a fixed amount of money purse? they can spend. Oh, okay. I was thinking like it was like a purse. All right, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean uh, Manchester United would have a lot more money. Liverpool would would have a lot more money than uh, a, like Brighton or Leeds United. So I think it is not fair. Same goes for MLB, I guess. Uh, like Moneyball is one of my favorite movies, favorite uh, sports movies ever. Uh, yeah, though even yeah, like they they go through the same problem as well. And if cricket goes the football way, then IPL will also go like we'll have the same problem. Yeah, but I also like that, you know, and, and I'm thinking like an American minor league cricket, you could develop that homegrown talent in your, it's called a farm league. So you have the professional league here, you have triple A's, double A, single A. So you develop that talent, you sign them and they come on to your, you have dibs on them. You have the first priority. And so you could do it that way. And so, it's really beautiful when you see teams like, you know, the Tampa Bay Rays or other teams that are kicking New York's ass The New York Yankees, they just buy all their players, but seeing that homegrown talent come up is a really beautiful thing. So money doesn't always, you know, equal success, but I could see that, you know, maybe in other countries systems that it does, you know, unfairly influence them. And I would hate to see that. And it's kind of something you see in rugby where the same teams win it every year. That's like tragic. That can't happen. So I think some parity. Yeah, I mean, even in the even in the English Premier League, there are six teams. Right. City, United, Liverpool, Chelsea, uh, and I'm forgetting two teams. Um Brittany. Arsenal and Tottenham. Arsenal. Yeah. Arsenal and Tottenham. So these are the the six teams that you know are the most financially sorted teams and they stay at the top six usually and qualify for the Champions League or whatever. And uh, the the and when a team like Leicester dominates and wins, it is it is once in a once in a century kind of a right uh, you know right. run. Yeah, I mean yeah, and you know uh, Manchester City has been winning the the league for the last three years and this time it might be Manchester City or Liverpool again. So it get, kind of gets a little monotonous when you know a kind of a, when a when a team is so highly placed financially than the rest of the team. So they they'll have the best of players around the world, and it gets re- really difficult. And so, also one more thing about one more thing oh, about yeah. the one more thing about like comparing IPL with EPL. It is that Liverpool has a player from Egypt, and he is one of the greatest. Then there are players from Senegal who are doing very well. But cricket does not have the liberty to bring players from those countries. Cricket is restricted to a really less amount of uh, teams. And that is one of the reasons why, uh, you know, just seven players can play. Like, like we have to play seven Indian players too. Like, now there are more overseas options available. But when the number of teams increase, the number of... Quality overseas players available will also reduce, and uh, quality of Indian players will also reduce. The teams will get diluted, and you know there will be financial disturbances as well. And you know even with eight teams or ten teams, there are a lot of financial problems that happens in IPL. Like there are a lot right. of scams that come out. Teams get banned. Like two teams got banned in, because of a betting case, and yeah, problems exist even now. And if it gets mainstream, then BCCI is already a very corrupt body, and too much power in the hands of BCCI might just mean like yeah. cricket can go anyway. Right. That's, that's, I, I think, yeah, that's a, that's a delicate thing that you got to do apart from that, you know, and the parody issues. Um, do you see any other problems with footballizing cricket? Um, are there any issues with like taking it away from test cricket, taking it away from ODIs? 
is that a worry or you know that's a problem in cricket that doesn't exist in american sports because we know and that's one thing i love about cricket i love the diverse ways you could play the game it's so cool if you could do that in baseball that'd be awesome um but having one way makes it way simpler because you don't have these arguments you know um it's a problem with footballization um that it's going to take away odi it's going to take away tests because odi is probably the first to go and that's i love odi i freaking love same, ODI. Same. my favorite like honestly t20 is it's, it's like picking your favorite child but i love odi I was watching the Canada versus Hong Kong. Canada just beat up, you know, uh, Hong Kong. And I watched like the match. I fell asleep. I woke up. It was still on. I love that. Is, is this a, is this an issue with with you know football footballizing cricket? Yeah, I mean, uh, cricket will get foot, like one of the main things that need to happen in order to cricket to go to football way is. Uh, big countries need to get involved big countries as in uh, financially uh equipped countries like usa again and if that happens like i understand that you like odi cricket a lot yeah. but an average american would not want to watch a single game of odi cricket and like baseball games are so short like two hours two and a half hours and now that the timing is increasing slightly to three hours that is becoming an issue and the watching is going down so right. i think Americans are very, uh, you know, what, what's the right word for it? Short attention span. Like the match needs to be as crisp as possible. I think cricket already is a very slow game. Three and a half hours is a lot of time. Uh, like the T20 format, it's three and a half hours. And that is also a lot of time. Uh, and, you know, ODI cricket obviously goes on for certainly longer time. So uh, I think... Both ODI and Test cricket will be restricted to the to the fair few. I think yeah. every country needs to uh, you know find their uh, find their uh, rivals. I would say uh, like India has Australia and England and uh, maybe South Africa. Australia has South Africa and India and England. So you know Test matches has to happen between these teams right. so that. There is a sense of rivalry and patriotism when we when the teams play together. I think USA and Canada can have a rivalry like that. I know the team like the countries are very close to each other, but again, the neighbors have the best of rivalries, like the best of banter's. So I think Test and ODA should be played between uh, only the rival countries, not like like an a a a Test series between India and. Uh, Suppose uh, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, yeah, yeah. No, still close by. Like India and Zimbabwe, India usually sends all their young players. Like when we have an right. ODI series, we send in our seaside so that they get their international status and uh, they become a cap player. They get some experience. So these kind of matches do not add a lot of hype and do not uh, bring a lot of watching with it. So I think. Like cricket should just think of viewership right now. Like if we are going that way, we should think of viewership. We should totally get into it. Like we should not keep it like uh, we should not. We should not have you know two ways to think about something. Either we are doing it to sp spread the game, or we are doing it for the money. It as simple. It is as simple as that. We should be clear with it. We should not be spreading a league like I'll bring ILT twenty again or GT twenty again. We should not be spreading the league like we are the league of this country but our audience is someone else and because right. they are the ones that can get us money but this is double perfect standards point. perfect point uh, that's like one of the most important points i think of this conversation you know and just you know a side note for the for the rivalry between usa and canada i mean both teams have to win fairly regularly and we dominate canada so it's more of just like a spanking competition between us I'd like to see a different team, you know, us play. That's actually more even because, you know, we just dominate any sport. We, we really take it to those Canucks. Um, but I don't think money is necessarily bad. And I think there's this issue with like, oh, these Yanks just love money. But money can provide you a, 
living, you know, a, a way to provide for your family, you know, it could provide uh, things for the community. It can, you know, right. so bringing this money in can create jobs for people. And now, now more people have jobs. Now professional cricketers can come and bring that into the community. Now you have youth programs that can, you know, spring up and they can support the local domestic team. So one thing, you know, I would want to say is, you know, you're going to where the money is, but money doesn't have to be like an evil thing. Obviously, personal wealth and just using it just to make yourself look good is not a good thing. You know, I, that's not what I'm about. But I'm, I'm using the money in a community oriented way, I think could be really good. You know, now I'm spending money, you know, people are infusing cash into the system and it's creating more opportunities for people. And I think that's a beautiful thing. I think you really need to do that. And sometimes that boggles my mind of why people are so hesitant to do that. I mean, of course you want to make money. Um, and so it's confusing right. to me um, that I don't think if you have test cricket that, I mean, I love test cricket. I've been watching um, West Indies beat up on Australia. That was awesome. Uh, India versus basketball. Um, really fun to watch. But that might have to be a separate thing over here where this is our money maker, you know, T20 cricket right here. And then you have like a little bit on the top for ODI and, uh, and test cricket. Do you think it's possible? And I know this is a crazy idea in baseball. Sometimes we have double headers where you have one game here and then another game. Do you think it'd be possible yeah. in a T20 league to occasionally have ODI games, you know, and like, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, we yeah, can have charity matches at max, nothing more than that. Like a yeah. charity match between uh, RCB and CSK 50 hour match, that would be very exciting to watch, but no. Okay. That's a kind of a crazy idea, but that would kind of be cool, though. Kind of, you know, like you just have like a double header, you know, and you kind of use that long format. I'm so sad because the OD ODIs are dying. You know, List A cricket is probably going the way of the dodo if, if that's the case. Um, I don't know how they survive. Do you think any like professional league in a in a fifty over format could be profitable the way T twenty is profitable? Very difficult to say. I I don't think as much money as T twenty, but maybe yeah, slightly yes. I think if BCCI does it, they know how to do it. They can do it anyways. Yeah. Like BCCI has done absurd things, and you know they have been on the right side, like been on the successful side most of the times. Like we are not winning any cup, but we are monetarily doing very well. So yeah, I would give give the credit for that to BCCA. So why is it that T20 is the most uh, profitable type of cricket? Is it just because it's three hours long, whereas ODI is eight hours long? Is that the issue? Is just simply like time? Is that the the most number one issue concerning this? Yeah, I have a very good, like, like I have an opinion about this. And the thing is, uh, I never felt uh, that ODIs are very long and boring. But people used to say this back in India as well. Like some, uh, you know, host of very popular sports, uh, you know, channels and uh, journalists used to say that from overs 11 to overs 40, the batters are very happy to take singles and just consolidate their innings. Yeah. And the bowlers, the bowling team is very happy to just give six runs and over and, you know, not more than that. So that is the boring phase of the, of ODI. 11, uh, overs 11 to overs 40, where not a lot happens. Yeah. And this was being mentioned again and again by, you know, even experienced people, like the people who were born, uh, the people who were doing it before I was born. So I, I never understood this until 2023 happened. 2023 World Cup, I, I enjoyed a lot because my team was doing very well. But yeah, there were certain matches where I felt like, yeah, over 11 to 14, nothing much is happening. And I was like, yeah, they were right all this while. So it is just about time that you start watching a lot of T20 and you will get accustomed to it. And then suddenly you will switch to ODI cricket and you will find it like, yeah, it, it is. He was right that it is get, kind of getting boring now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you have a team that you really like, or it's like a very important game, like you're glued to it. But if you don't have that meaning, that context with it, it can be very boring. Like if you're, I was watching, um, 
like the Caribbean, they have a 50 over leg. It was on ESPN. And I'm just like, I cannot watch this. This is just, it's slow. But like if the United States is playing like the U19 and I'm all in it, like I want to know every player. So I think that's right. also important to keep in mind. Like you need the, the specific context, but yeah, just getting new fans into it. Like T20 is the way to go because it's short. Is T20 short enough? You know, he's talking about it's three and a half hours long. Do you think there is a possibility that it gets even shorter? Obviously, T10 is ridiculous. It works only on small scales like the European cricket. But do you think there is potential to kind of tweak T20 to make it even shorter? I was thinking about it a few hours hours ago before you know when we were discussing about the 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 topics of the podcast and uh, yeah. yes t- t20s are not short enough yes they might think of reducing the overs further but is it the right thing i am not sure i don't think yeah. uh, i think that every sport has a few problems like even the football is 90 minutes but for a new watcher, those 90 minutes will feel like hell if nothing is happening. The scoreline can be 0-0 for the entirety of 90 minutes and the match will not come out with the result. So this is the problem. This is the restriction with football. So I think I think cricket can have its own restrictions. If the sport is high scoring, if the sport is pleasing to the eye, then I think one limitation of like three hours, three and a half hours can be, uh, you know, you know, sidelined. Um, I think uh, three and a half hours is a lot of time and there is n- absolutely no way that we can reduce it because yes, the fielding placements, the fielding changes, the time it takes are required. The time when the players switch the like switch ends, that time is required. There is time uh, like w- at least one drinks break is required in between 20 overs. So I don't think it can be reduced further. But uh, yeah, I think we have to stick to the stick to this format not not do a lot of uh reduction anymore because 20 overs is the sweet spot let's not go under it like t15 would like 15 over matches would be ridiculous yeah i think that would be ridiculous and t10 is obviously way too short um one thing i love about baseball growing up in the summer is you you know it is short but you do it every day you watch and i have so many great right. memories and that's what i love about cricket I was watching the Dibbly Dobbly podcast um, and he had Mike Coward on and Mike Coward said, you know, his famous Australian journalist, he said, cricket lends itself to literature and I love it. And you can tell that in the fans because they're very they're thinking, they're, they're constantly observing and they're intelligent. Um, that's probably why I like the game, but um, no, I'm, but like I, I just listening to the game every day is, is just so pleasurable do you think that cricket could have more games regularly? Like, why do they need a day or two day breaks? Is there is it possible that T20 cricket could have a game like, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then take breaks like that? More like a baseball kind of schedule, you know, um, play more games. No, I think even the footballers take their time. Footballers do not play matches every consecutive day. It takes a it takes a toll. I think cricketers are already going through a lot of injury concerns. We get injured quite easily, yeah. to be honest. And when we get injured, there is there is no clarity when will be will when will we be coming back? Like Hardik Pandya stays injured nine months and <laughs> plays IPL for two months and a little bit of international uh, before he gets injured again. So yeah, injury is a concern. So I think the players should not be put like a lot of burden should not be put on the players. And, uh, you know, bilateral series, bilateral T20s or bilateral ODIs do not make a lot of sense. So if, you know, if we are like, I think in the future, bilaterals will be gone. And, uh, you know, I think it is fine if say today, Kolkata and Delhi is playing and tomorrow Punjab and Hyderabad will be playing and the next day Chennai and Mumbai are playing. So, you know, the players are also getting their rest. And the matches are also interesting. There is no break of flow like ha- like which happens in the English Premier League when the players are not playing any matches in the in the weekdays. So right, uh, yeah. yeah. So I, had to get that I think there, yeah. yeah, I had to get that out there because that's going to be a question that Americans ask. You know, that's like that's the American thinking, and it might seem like a like a bad question or like 
you know, like, why would that be? But that's what probably we're thinking coming from a baseball background. And, um, but it makes the games more important, you know, um, typically in baseball, you would have a team like you'd have, um, you know, Mumbai Indians are hosting Lucknow. Lucknow would come to Mumbai for like five days right. and they'd play a series of five games back to back to back to back to back. And so it's just fun watching that. That's kind of like our test cricket format. It's just, you know, games are short, but we play every day. But, you know, that makes sense. You know, and obviously maybe it's taking more of a physical toll. Bilateral series mm. are the things that don't make sense to me at all. I hate them because, you know, if you go on ESPN, Crick Info, whatever, you're seeing these teams, you're seeing domestic competitions, but also like New Zealand playing Pakistan. Why? Why? Right. Why are they doing that? Why is United States not doing this? You know, and it's not fair for tier two teams, you know, because you're setting it up individually. So it's like all the popular kids are going off making play dates, you know, and like, I want a play date for United States. When, when do we get a play date? You know, I want to play these teams. It just seems like what, what do you win when you win a bilateral series? Like what happens? Like, do you win a, is there anything that happens? Like, then why are you doing it? Um, so then this is a very American mindset, but do you think bilateral series have to go? Yeah, I think the, the point that you made is absolutely spot on. We, we do not win anything. It just, it is just because for like experience, match practice, uh, yeah, I think when bilaterals was a thing, bilaterals were required, uh, back in the day in the nineties or eighties. Even in the early 2000s, yeah, bilaterals were required back then. But now, uh, bilaterals do not make a lot of sense. Yeah, you're, you're right. Bilateral test matches do. The current India versus England has a lot of history behind it. So, yeah, those five matches are going to be as interesting, as intense as it gets. Uh, but bilateral ODIs and bilateral T20s makes zero sense. Yeah. You know, there's a famous baseball player. When we started the World Baseball Classic he was like, why would I play international baseball? That's the stupidest thing ever. My priority is to the domestic team and you guys can go F yourselves. Do you think that cricket puts too much emphasis on international cricket and with the footballization, it's going to go more to a domestic product in the future? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, like this, this is the debate. Like, uh, this is the debate that happens between like whenever we talk about footballization like international is international important and uh, i think west indies was the first country to like come out and have the courage to speak yeah. that yes international is required but it is also required for us like we also need to make money and west indies right. board is not not making us a lot of money so right. I I appreciate Sunil Narin. I appreciate Andre Russell for taking breaks. Sunil Narin does not like just stepped away from international uh, completely. But yeah, I I I respect that decision as well. So yeah, yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah, I think that you know cricket puts too much emphasis on international cricket. There's international games like what it doesn't make sense to have international games. Um, you know, and I understand the need for a World Cup. Uh, World Cups are beautiful, uh, but I like to follow the domestic product, see the, the players that I like, and then you see them in the World Cup. It's kind of like an all-star game, and it's fun. Right. Um, and it's really cool. Um, do you think uh, – well, what was my other question? Do you have any issues or, uh, you know, like what are the positives about – footballizing cricket you know like what are the benefits and like what would cricket inter you know domestic cricket look like in 20 30 years as we go the way of you know footballization yeah more more money will flow into the system i think yeah. you know i think there is barely any money in cricket like india is making a lot of money australia is making money england is making money pakistan is making a little little bit of money but the rest of the countries are struggling yeah, why? You know, it is, it's, it is the bitter truth. Uh, yeah. I don't like the Zimbabwe cricket doesn't have a lot of money. West Indies cricket doesn't have a lot of money, and they are the OG teams. Zimbabwe was yeah. one of the one of the great one of the top tier teams back in the day, and today they are they do not even make it to a twenty team World Cup. So this is a very serious thing. No, that's crazy. That's crazy to yeah. think about. I was looking up their T Twenty league, and they 
you can't even find their logo. You know, it's like, where is this league? Why is it not televised? Why are you not doing that? It boggles the mind of why you wouldn't make that like a big commercial product. Um, and and it is not like it is not like they do not have the players for it. I I know yeah. more Zimbabwe players than I know of uh, Sri Lanka probably. Yeah. Craig Irvine, uh, Williams, Sikandar Raza, Blessin Muzarabani. Then there's a lot of players. I I know Bro. I I have Bro. followed Zimbabwe cricket through and through for for many many years. And it has it has such a good history, but uh, yeah, I mean, the flow of money into the system is very important, and uh, I think footballization cannot happen totally until more teams get involved. And again, for, again, the same paradox: money is required. If money is there, yeah. other countries will pick up the sport; it will grow, and you will have more players. If today, like. Uh, when it comes to football, there is an English Premier League, there is a Serie A, there is a Liga, there is Bundesliga, right, right. there is La Liga. There's, there are so many uh, leagues and players play for just one team. This is mad. Absolute madness. And yeah. if if IPL becomes a 10-month long season, all the other leagues have to get closed down. All the other leagues. Yeah. Why? Yeah, because I mean, there will there will not be there will not be any time for any other league to be played, and the main players will be playing the IPL. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Um, I think 10, 10 months would be really long. You know, if you do five to six months, um, limit it to Indian players. Um, at that same time, have other domestic leagues. So I'm thinking like a yank here again. That would be a problem. Like if you have like, let's just say arbitrarily, just just to be clear, you know, just to make a clear example, January through, you know, July, we're going to have the domestic season and all the domestic seasons have to happen between here. India having its domestic season at the same time as Sri Lanka, as Bangladesh, as Pakistan, as South Africa, as Australia, would that be a problem for other leagues? Would that take talent away I, from? Yeah, I think that like in today's day and age, there are just 10 teams and there are limited number of players playing the league. As I said, 80 overseas players. But if the teams increase, we will have to pick the players who are currently not getting picked. Say right. like Ben Dunk. Ben Dunk is a Ben Dunk is one of the leading run scorers in PSL. So if Ben Dunk is playing in IPL, he will not be available for the PSL season. And PSL will be restricted to the Pakistani players. Sri Lanka will be restricted to the Sri Lankan players who are not picked up by the IPL. Because IPL has all the money. Hasranga will yeah. most likely play for Sunrisers Hyderabad over B Love Candy. Right. Yeah, that's a problem. That's a pro- it's, India is so powerful that that becomes, a, that becomes an issue. By the way, Ben Dunk, I'm, that's my new favorite player from now, and that's an awesome name. Um, wow. So so that's an issue because on the Andre Russells, the uh, Chris Gales, the whatevers, you know, right. they're going to be playing in Indian Premier League. They're not going to be playing right. there. Is there any way to com- combat that, like to infuse money into other leagues? I mean, it's not fair, you know, if, if like you have a Faf Duplessis and – he could make more money in Indian Premier League. He should go to the Indian Premier League and play. It's almost like, uh, like the NBA is like here, and then you have the Euro League here. But it's slowly gaining parity. Before it was like we would you'd make fun of European basketball, like aha, we'd have a Croatian player here or there. Nowadays, it's getting like closer, where you see some Americans playing there, but still NBA is king. And that's an issue because you can't have a Champions League because NBA is going to dominate all those European teams, right? And that that sucks. Do you th- are you okay with that? Are you okay with India dominating the way United States is? It might have to be that way, where India is the top, and you still have really good leagues at the bottom, but the best players are going to go to India. You're not. Are you okay with that? Or are you not okay with that? Um, that is a very good question. Uh, this this was this was the problem that Champions League was facing. Uh, the champions, the cricket Champions League, 
because forty yeah. percent of the teams that were playing that were IPL teams, right. and uh, and back in the day, IPL did not have that much money that we have today. So today, no other right. league can stand up. Probably MLC if they get the funding. Uh, so if we are playing a a team from Australia or or a team from uh, West Indies, then their players will be in our teams. Like right, uh, Lucknow Super Giants has Nicholas Puran. So Nicholas Puran has to decide which team will he choose. So yeah. if Nicholas Puran chooses Lucknow, then his local team, the West Indies team, will go down. Like uh, right. like they will not they will have a player less. So am I okay with uh, the IPL's domination going down? Probably yes. Having said that, the other league is as interesting to watch. If the other league is just money and it is not like there is not much rivalry, there is not much to look after. It is not so visually appealing, and but it, but it just has some powerful big businessmen trying to push it. Then that will be a big turn off, and that will be the eventual death of cricket. But if 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 the league doesn't deserve to be watched, I think I I do not support it. But if it does, then yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's an inevitability. Is India's dominance as the top league, and it almost would not make sense for them to have a Champions League or be part of it. Maybe you could have like the the champion of the Champions League play the Indian Premier League champion, you know, and do something like that. But India is going to be on a whole league on, on its own. If I was following, you know, more of an American model, it's just an inevit- inevitability. That's where the money goes. That's fair. India deserve it. They've done everything right. So they deserve to be the best. You know, it's that's all fair um, in, in my opinion. So, yeah, that's that's going to be really interesting to see what that looks like in, in 20 to 30 years yeah. with the growth of these domestic seasons. Yeah. Or, or competitions. Um um, anything else other that, that we haven't mentioned, I'm trying to, to think of if there's any other concerns with, you know, the footballization of cricket, if there's anything we could do to stop it, if there's, you know, um, I mean, know, there I, is nothing, there is nothing to stop. I think, uh, if like, if it moves in that direction, we like, there are certain pros and cons of moving towards footballization and there are certain pros and cons of not changing with time. Like you have, you need to change with time. Mm -hmm. Uh, But yeah, I think footballization is eventual. Like it will happen more or less in any time frame from today on. I think it will hurt. There'll be some growing Like it has gone the footballization way today than it had gone 10 years from today. Not 10 years, I would say 20 years from today. 20 years from today, cricket was cricket. And there was no modernization, footballization, soccerization, right. whatever you, you want to call it. But we have, if a person from 2004 would be what would be watching the modern cricket, he would say that cricket is all football now. But today, like right. our generation says that we have a long way to go. Like we will be a football, like cricket will become a footballized sport in right. 2044. And maybe in 2044, the people will have, will say the same thing. Yeah, right, right. And it's slowly, you don't realize those changes as they happen over time. Um, You know, I look at, uh, you know, cricket in the past and sometimes, um, I'm recording here. So uh, sometimes in the past, um, it's kind of, some of those matches are a little bit like, I don't know, hard to understand or boring. You don't have the context. It's all like national teams. So I think this is ultimately a good thing that's happening um, with cricket, especially with new fans. So, yeah, um, I guess the the last thing that I had was, uh, or that we had that, that you planned out is uh, jerseys in, in cricket, you know, these uh, home and away jerseys. I stole this from the Nishman, the Nishmeister. Yeah, so I was part of Nishman's uh, uh, video here. And this is like very different in, in cricket compared to like American sports, because I was watching Canada versus Hong Kong. Like this is going to confuse new fans. Cause it's like, they both have red. Yeah. Obviously different jerseys 
colors to play the game. It's not like rugby or soccer where it's fundamentally going to like confuse you. Like, you know, you know that the guy batting, you know, these are the guys fielding. So it's not like a danger. Um, but if you look at an American model, you can clearly say like gray jerseys are for away, white jerseys are for home. It's always that way. So much so that we have this thing called the all-star game where we have the national league playing the American league. It's, we have two divisions, 15 teams on both sides and they wear right. their home jerseys. They don't need a special Jersey because you know, which player they're, which team they're playing for. Cause they have the white jerseys and over here, they wear their own jerseys because it's gray. And so like, you don't even need a unique Jersey that way. Um, do you think this is something like cricket needs to do um, in the future or it's something that would be beneficial? Yeah, I think it again all comes down to uh, the, the, I don't know, I don't know why, but I researched about this a little bit and it said that the boards are not, like the boards are not financially well off and that is the reason there are no away jerseys like that makes absolutely zero sense to me but uh yeah i think cricket has been facing this problem i have heard this from a lot of people that when uh, india and sri lanka play it is so difficult to make out who is what yeah when when uh, bangladesh pakistan and south africa play it is so difficult to make out and the, it, it just makes the sport so unattractive like right. the same color like colors are very important and right. uh, that is the reason i like uh, i like netherlands cricket so much because orange cricket kit looks mm. beautiful it's great. and uh, yeah we need more red and cyan and like different shades of blue for god's sake like pakistan used to have yeah the, the 1992 color of pakistan jersey is the one they should have right now uh, yeah yeah, and we India. Hmm, yeah, we were talking about um, the uh, the hundred and how the colors really pop, and yeah. you know um, that's not something they're doing in international cricket that they really need to do. They need to copy what, or 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 at least be influenced by what's happening in those leagues and make distinctive jerseys that go. Psh, but when you have the same right. type of red, it's like oh, like it's just not appealing. Oh, that is beautiful. That Pakistan, nineteen ninety two jerseys oh awesome and uh what was i going to say yeah england makes the best jerseys england jerseys are very good i have to give them credit for that yeah and oh my yeah favorite, my favorite is uh is one which nobody re really talks about but i like it a lot uh their 2011 world cup jersey i like it a lot i don't know if other people do 2011 world cup england oh yeah yeah i like that it's a nice like reddish red and blue or yeah. maybe blue so, or black. Yeah. So I think England makes really good, uh, good jerseys and even Australia has picked a niche color, like not, not a lot of, uh, yeah. you know, countries go with that yellow, the bright yellow or whatever the color is. I don't know. Yeah, I want, really I neat. want, I really like when South Africa plays the pink jersey. Like the pink jersey has such a great record, and like I think they should just make it the thing. Yeah, just go with it. Um, it's distinctive. It's gonna give you yeah that pink jersey is sweet. No one's yeah, and when it, pink jersey. Yeah, 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 and uh, they actually changed. Uh, like they they brought in the home and away concept in the twenty nineteen ODI World Cup. But, like not necessarily home and away, but. Uh, like all the matches were played in England. So England had their just one jersey. And whenever uh, like whenever India played England, they would play like the jersey that you can see right now, the orange jersey. Oh, and really? every team had a second jersey for that. And that was the one one season, the uh, one World Cup when we had home and away jerseys. So Bangladesh had a different color. South Africa had a different color. It, again, thinking like a Yank, there's a lot of opportunities to sell different types of jerseys, you know, like, oh, right. and, and it's a thing in America, like, I want the home jersey, I want the away jersey, I want 
we also have a third jerseys, uh, a third jersey in in a lot of sports like hockey and uh, baseball. So, so you have a special jersey you'll just bust out for a special occasion. Maybe you're celebrating right. a, a famous uh, Indian legend who's coming back in town. You're gonna wear a special jersey to market the occasion. So it's kind of a way to celebrate things. Yeah, we're yeah, not yeah. Going to celebrate you here. We're showing you on what we're wearing that we're celebrating you. It's a beautiful thing. And yeah. Okay. So and, this is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Continue. 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 I didn't want to. You go you ahead know. because your your points more. Yeah, I got a point. I'll put it back. No, 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 no. Just continue. Just continue. Just continue. I, I, you will hate me if I continue with the point that I have right now. So continue. Okay. okay. Um, when you develop a long history of cricket, domestic cricket like you do in baseball and other sports, um, what you could do is have throwback jerseys. So one, one thing we do is like, you know, we'll wear a jersey from the 1970s. Retro, you know, retro, yeah. retro jerseys. And that's also very fun. And so like seeing someone wearing a retro jersey, like, oh, shit, that's so cool. You're wearing like the 1980, you know. Um, yeah. So there's like a lot of opportunities for marketing to show pride for your team. Um, you can't just do that with one jersey. It's kind of just, boring you know it's having one so yeah right i mean yeah now let me add that point like this is that that time of the day when i set, when i try to sell my favorite ipl franchise oh, uh, yeah. yeah this is that pitch when i talk about rcb like honestly rcb has the finance game on point they know how to sell uh, like rcb has the best jersey rcb knows how to sell stuff like just just search for the rcb 2023 jersey it is the best jersey i know of i just want to buy it uh, like it is like the next my next purchase will be an rcb jersey that is tight and, yeah yeah and they have a green jersey as well that they that is an occasional jersey uh, that they play one home game where they promote go green initiative so even that is a really okay. good jersey yeah and uh, apart from that even they had a blue jersey as well to honor the the corona warriors the covid uh, oh, wow. uh, the doctors and the people who lost their lives so rcb does this really well and rcb is the only side to have uh, you know started the home and away jersey thing like they did it for one season and then they also got rid of it. It was basically when they were playing the home games, the top half of the t-shirt would be red and the lower wow. half would be black and the other way around uh, in away in away games. That's so right. RCB was the RCB was the pioneer of that. But yeah, I think RCB makes the best jerseys, hands down. Uh, I have not seen any other jersey as good as them. I'd give them credit for that. Yeah, it looks really, really nice. And um, again, you know, the visual aspect of the game is important just as much as the, the actual competition. Um, right. I love it. I love it. And I think that's something that, that cr especially international cricket needs to do, like to, like yesterday, is focus on the, those jerseys, have it a thing in the ICC where if you're a home team, you get dibs on your jersey. The away team has to have a different color. Uh, having the right. same like red red or you know like Pakistan and what was I what was I saying there was there was another one uh, example there's a lot of examples and it just it's not appealing visually you know it's got to change so there you have it guys that is podcast number two in the books uh, check it out uh, I'm Joey from New World Cricket this is uh, uh, Utsaf here and so yeah guys uh, make sure to like and subscribe uh, leave a comment in below. Let us know what you think about those jerseys. Let us know what you think about um, the footballization of cricket. Do you agree with our T20 list? We want to know. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Rip us in the comments. We don't care. Let us know all those comments. And we'll see you in the next podcast. I hope you'll be there. See you guys. Adios. Signing off. Signing off. <laughs>